Hi everyone, this is Andrew Neumanns and this is the fourth video in a series where we talk about how to take our MicroStation models out to the Unity game engine and then from there to the HTC Vive virtual reality headset. As with the other videos, uh, watch this one in conjunction with the written tutorial that I've posted on Bentley's MicroStation visualization forum. Uh, in this one video, we will talk about how to import our FBX files and set default attributes and then how to include those FBX files into our project. So typically we, oh, this is where we left off in the last video with our Unity project. So to import the FBX files, the first thing that I like to do is actually close Unity and then use my Windows File Explorer to do this next part. So here are the FBX files that we created with MicroStation in the uh, second video, I think. Uh, and here is the Unity Projects folder, and this is the test project that I've created. So let's just double click on that, and we can see in here there's an Assets folder. So in this Assets folder, I want to create a new folder called FBX. Um, to me, that makes sense, but um, you guys call it whatever you like. Um, so the idea is that I will simply copy these FBX files that I've created previously into the Unity FBX folder. And, and so going forward, uh, in the future, as we make changes to our MicroStation model and re-export our geometry, in the future, all we would do is just copy the changed files back over the top of the FBX files in our Unity project. And then when Unity uh, restarts, it will recognize that the files have changed and incorporate all those changes automatically. So now that we've put the FBX files into the Unity uh, project folder, let's just start Unity now. And here's our test project. So we'll start that. And you should notice that things are happening. Um, Unity has recognized that there's some new content in its project and it's analyzing it and creating metadata, uh, extracting textures, doing all that sort of stuff, creating materials. Um, and this metadata is what keeps track of the version of the FBX file that uh, is in the Unity project. So in the future, when we replace in the future, when we use new versions of these FBX files to replace these existing ones in the Unity project, uh, Unity will know that they're newer and it will know what to do with all the new geometry. So, so here we are back in Unity. And you'll notice now here in the Assets folder, there's this new folder called the FBX, which reflects the folder that we created in our file browser. Uh, if we expand that, um, for some reason it likes to re uh, analyze the JPEG images. So we'll just wait a few moments for that. Okay, so let's just expand that. So here in the FBX folder, you can see uh, the content that's been imported. Um, so these files with the um, blue cube icon next to them are the actual FBX files, which we will eventually be dragging and dropping into our project here. Uh, this is just all the ancillary information, so the textures and so on. Uh, I guess this folder here, the material folder, is one that we will definitely be concerned with. Um, but before we dive into that, let's just look at uh, these FBX files here. So. Uh, as you remember, the Mesh Collider was the only additional geometry that we had to create for the Unity project, whereas all of these other uh, FBX files are simply taken straight out of our MicroStation project with very little um, changes required for Unity. So as we click on the FBX files, you can see there's a little preview down here. So this is my Mesh Collider, and then we've got the uh, gantries left and right, the ground plane and the rocket ship. So the idea with these uh, FBX files here in the assets folder is that they are imported into uh, Unity based on some default import parameters, which are defined here. So we just need to set some of these up so that in the future, all new versions of the FBX files use the, the same desirable settings. Um, 
we will be having slightly different settings for the collider geometry and then for the rest of the geometry they will all have the same import settings so let's just look at the import settings for the collider geometry uh, so basically we will turn off read write um, we will so with the collider ge uh, geometry mesh we definitely want to generate colliders um, so that's what the teleporter will um, detect and land on and stop us from teleporting through walls and all that sort of stuff so for the collision mesh we'd need to turn on the generate colliders but for all the other meshes we don't want to turn that on uh, so here for the no surface normals we'll just have unity recalculate the surface normal direction uh, the smoothing angle um, i find 60 degrees is a little bit too aggressive and i end up having uh, unity trying to make smooth transitions between facets that sometimes I don't want to be smooth transitions I want hard edges so I've been setting that to 30 degrees and it, it works pretty well for me uh, tangents we set to none and since we're dealing with the collision mesh uh, the intention is that the collision mesh is invisible it's it's simply used um, as an analysis tool for the collision uh, uh, logic so we don't need a material on the collision mesh so we'll just turn that off and then we press apply and that's now done so in the future when we replace the collision mesh with new versions it will use all of these parameters now for the rest of the our geometry we will highlight that and just go through the similar settings so we'll turn off the read write we definitely do not want to generate collision um, colliders for all of our geometry um, we will set the normals to calculate again I'll just set this to 30 degrees and I'll set the tangents to to none now at this point we will apply the changes but I will come back and make a change to this setting here uh, and, and you can see we do want to import the materials obviously for our real geometry so I'll just go apply so that should only take a few moments. Okay, so we're done. Um, now, like I was saying before, we, we do want to change this setting here, but it's not that simple. Um, here, this setting is telling Unity to import the material names from these um, from this geometry and to base the name of that material on the texture that's applied to the material now that's not very useful I, I would prefer that the well I would want the material name to be the same as the material name that I have in MicroStation um, but it's not doing that it's basing the name of the material on the texture that's applied so I want to change that to use this from models material but before I do that, we just have to be aware that um, the materials have already been imported based on this naming scheme. And so if we go into the materials folder, you can see these are the materials that have been imported. And if I click on the various materials, you can see them. Um, but they're using the texture name. They're not using the material name that I've, I've been using in MicroStation. And I, and I want the same material names um, I mean here it's it's trivial there's only a handful of materials but I have projects with hundreds of materials so I really need the materials to be named the same way that they are in MicroStation so to fix this I first come to the materials folder highlight all my materials and I delete them because they're, they're named incorrectly so let's go back to our FBX folder highlight all of the uh, individual FBX files and you can see here that they don't have any materials at, uh, at the moment so highlight all of the uh, materials that I want to import and I'll change the import default to from models material uh, and now once again I'll press the apply button and the materials would be re-imported and they will use the material name as it existed in MicroStation so just give that a few moments to complete Okay, that's done so if we now just go into the materials folder and check what it's done so let's just do that and here you can see 
some material names and they are quite long and cumbersome. And this is because MicroStation's FBX exporter um, insists on appending the file name to the material name that, um, that MicroStation has. So it's not a big deal because the first part of this name is always going to be the material name as it's defined in MicroStation and, and then you can just learn to ignore this last part. But there is one other little twist to the story and that is sometimes you'll see um, duplicate materials. So here we have a metal plate and metal plate. Now the reason that there are two versions is because they come from the two exported gantry files that I had because I have gantry left and gantry right. They happen to use the same material but because the exporter appends the file name to the material name um, in here we end up having two material names. So you have to, do, you have to edit the material twice. That's not so painful because we do have the option of multi-selecting materials. So I can select as many materials as I want at once. And in fact, I can select, select them all at once and, and then um, modify the smoothness or the specularity or whatever. Um, but in this case, I can simply select the two identical materials and then do identical changes to them. Um, so so that's done. We've set our default import parameters. We're using the better material name option. Um, now, at this point, if we were not intending to use the lab renderer later on in the process, um, at this point, we might now go through these materials and optimize them. And by optimize, I mean here you can see this metal plate. Well, actually, not even. let's look at the ground. Here you can see the ground material um, has some specularity and all the rest and, and I don't want the ground to be specular, it needs to be a totally matte material. So if I wasn't going to be using the lab renderer at this point I might, uh, well I, I would need to uh, optimize the materials. So for instance um, I, for this ground material uh, it shouldn't be a metallic type material so I'll just change that to an albedo type material. The smoothness you can see here it's looking very smooth, billiard ball smooth, we don't want that, so we can take the uh, smoothness parameter down to zero. Uh, and that might be all we want to do with this material. Uh, just to point out here, this albedo is the texture, and this uh, swatch color, this has a great impact on the color of the material. Um, so you want this to be white. If, for instance, this was red, you can see the material has a red tint to it. Now, I mentioned that here because back in MicroStation, when you've defined your material and you've chosen this uh, texture to be the material base color, um, there is also an option in MicroStation to use color only. And if you accidentally leave the color swatch in MicroStation to be some other, say red, but then instead use the texture map, MicroStation ignores the red color and will just use the, the texture map. But here in Unity, that red color gets transferred to this swatch and it will influence the color of the texture when you really didn't intend it to. So uh, it's a good idea in MicroStation to make sure that the color swatch is always set to white, even though you are using textures. Um, but if you forget to do that in MicroStation, make sure in Unity to come here to change this to pure white. Um, but as I say, we're, we're not going to bother tweaking our materials now because we're going to use the lab renderer and it has its own material properties that would need to be set and we'll, we'll do that later. So um, so here we are, we've imported the materials, we set the import um, behavior so that in the future new FBX files get imported the same way. And so now we're ready to take this content and put it into our project. You can see here in the view that we don't see any uh, rocket ships or gantries or ground planes. So we want to take this content and put it up here into our project. Um, before I do that, um, or I'd like to just... Um, set things up to be a little bit neater. So what I'll do is here in this window, I'll right click on here and I'll create an empty uh, container or an empty folder. Um, so here it's called the game object. So I'll just rename that and, and I'll name it to something meaningful to my project. So in this case, I'll call it um, tin tin. Uh, so this is the folder where I will, will dump all of this uh, new geometry. So all I need to do now Oh, and the other thing too, uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, whenever you put some content into here, make sure to check, or, or in this case, create an empty folder, 
just make sure to check that the uh, position, rotation and scales are, are set to 001. Um, and it is in this case, so that's fine. So here the uh, Tintin folder is empty and we will simply take all of these FBX files and drag them and drop them onto the Tintin folder. And so here you can see what's happened. And in fact, I might put the collider mesh up at the top. Um, so if we just zoom out a little bit here, we can see our scene. And in fact, you can see the collider mesh here um, and at the bottom of the these rocket nacelles. Um, and the collider mesh is this white, snowy colored object. Now, we don't want to see the collider mesh. We want to only see the actual geometry from our project. So for instance, if I highlight the collider mesh, I can turn it off here. And so this is what I expect to see, but I don't want to turn off my collider mesh because I want to use it. So the solution is over here, there's a category called mesh renderer. So we can turn off the mesh renderer or even better, we can come to here and remove the mesh renderer altogether. Uh, which to me seems like a much neater thing to do. So that's all we need to do for the Collider Mesh. And, and in fact, you can even notice in the Collider Mesh here, there is a Mesh Collider object. Whereas if we go to any one of these other meshes, they don't have a Mesh Collider object because that wasn't defined as part of the import settings. Um, now, it most now these FBX files that we dropped onto the Tintin Pro, uh, folder, um, again, it might be just worth to checking just to make sure that it is placed at 000. The gantry is at 001, the gantry right 001, the rocket ship is zero and the ground plane at zero. So that's all good. Um, so we're almost done. The only thing worth mentioning now before the end of the video is um, in previous videos, when we set up our camera rig, I mentioned again, as I've mentioned so many times in this video, to check the position of things that they are at 001. So here our camera rig is, is at 001 and I actually would like my camera to start not underneath the rocket ship, but over here off to the side. So at this point, um, it might be a good idea to actually move the camera rig. So I can just grab the camera rig and move it yeah, maybe here. And then you notice over here in the X, Y, and Z values that, that there are new numbers in there. Um, and I guess I could just round that off to maybe six meters and 14 meters. So, um, so we've moved the camera where we would like to start in our virtual reality scene. And I think that's about it for this video. The next video we will talk about, where are we? We will talk about setting up the valve renderer and setting up the directional light or the sun in our scene. So that's it. Thanks and see you next time. Bye.